All right, I've been Coin Chess and Wine here. It is Friday, October 29th, 2010. I'd like to do a video market recap with you. This is uh, a daily chart of the S&P 500 that you're looking at. Uh, and once again, at, even after this week, we remain in a series of higher lows and higher highs. Ever since early September, we've got a rising 20-day moving average that has not been breached uh, despite the... Uh, shakeouts that we've seen over the past couple of weeks. We've got a rising 50-day moving average. Uh, we've, uh, we've held firmly above this key 1150 breakout level. Uh, and really, uh, all the moving averages are starting to line up in temporal order here. The only one that's kind of that's kind of uh, lagging behind the pack is this 100-day moving average, but even that is uh, flattened out and is, is turning up now. And dis despite the amount of people that are have te been tempted to call a top to this market, uh, you know, I've kind of been, I don't want to say I've been pounding the table, but I have been harping on the idea that let us let us err on the side of the prevailing trend until we have a reason not to. And the reason is because even though the S&P, for example, has been more or less uh, consolidating for over two weeks now, right around this, uh, in this 1165 to 1185 range, you can see it's more or less been uh, uh, a series of doji indecisive candles, especially in the past week or so. The breakouts and the breakdowns have been equally faded here. Despite that, there's been... There's been some good individual opportunities underneath the surface. There have been names that have seen bona fide breakouts. I know we're in earnings seasons. There, there have been plenty of favorable earnings reactions uh, for bulls. So I think if you uh, had had just kind of uh, claimed that we, declared that we called the top two weeks ago or a week ago and you went short, uh, you know I think you're unless you nailed this top exactly right here at 1196 on Monday you're probably in sitting on some losses right now and if you went to 100 percent cash uh, you've missed out on some good underlying opportunities which I think is uh, just illustrates that I think until you have a reason not to I believe strategically is correct to err on this when you're in a trending market I think is correct to err on the side of the prevailing trend uh, you, regardless of how long the tooth you may think it feels until you have much more of a reason not to. For example, if we saw some heavy selling volume that cut through down through this uh, rising 20 20 day moving average like a uh, you know, like a hot knife through butter, then that might be a reason to uh, to to get even more cautious, but we we just haven't seen that. I mean, you look at some of the leading stocks here like an Apple Apple computer and even even though it had it did get very extended in the short term uh, two weeks ago, it's had nearly two full weeks now to consolidate those gains to come down to this rising twenty day moving average. I think it actually marginally took it out today. Yeah, it did. So I, I think it's had time to rest. So this whole idea that the market needs to rest here, well, I think I think that's a little bit short sighted because the market has had. Uh, time to rest, especially some of the leaders. Another leader I've been talking about, uh, Freeport McMoran here, FCX. Uh, just, again, it's kind of working through this uh, little mini pennant here, uh, and it's uh, it, once again ever since it hit 100 nearly two weeks ago, or over two and a half weeks ago, it's had time to work through and consolidate uh, those gains. Amazon.com, another leader here. Uh, it's it's had plenty of time to uh, consolidate above this rising 20-day moving average. So I think we've seen some of the leading stocks. They've had time to rest, even though it might seem like the market needs to uh, to correct. I know a lot of people are calling for three, four, five percent corrections. Uh, I, I've said that's definitely a possibility, but I, I just think it might. We might go higher first before we correct. And the reason why I say that, why I'm giving that more that idea more respect, is once again we're in a prevailing trend. So I'm te I, my. My te my I'm, I'm much more apt to err on that side. Now let's take a look at the Nasdaq Composite here. Again, this is a very strong uptrend here. Is it sustainable forever for the next year? Absolutely not. This angle of ascent is is extremely steep here. But like I said, just because it's a steep angle, and I know it's very easy to to picture a couple big red candles coming down here. We're well above the 20 and 50 day moving averages. Before we do that, we could easily get some kind of blow off top to the upside before we reverse keep in mind we are on an uptrend and the uptrend could easily end with a boom uh, just as easily as it could roll over tomorrow so why not err on the side of the bulls here uh, the Dow Jones transportation the next similar kind of thing 52 week highs this week has come to terms with it and it's uh, above all rising major moving averages